Thank you so much. So I'm sitting here barely containing my excitement because <laughs> um, Mona is continuing the work that was started in the previous administration, and she's carrying it through in the current administration. And I just I want to say thank you for your service, and I just want to highlight that as um, something that's, that's somewhat unique these days, something that has real bipartisan support. And um, so I wanted to start out by talking about why I think that is. It's patriotic to share data. This is the way that we are actually going to build a healthcare system that works for everybody, and that's why this is supported by both Democrats and Republicans. And I also just want to highlight um, the, the HIPAA rule, the right of access, the individual right of access that sometimes is used as a bludgeon, is actually a tool for individual empowerment, which again is so American as a concept. Um, and so that's the context that I wanted to bring. I, I loved Mona opening with this idea of organizational change. And my challenge to you guys is if HHS can create organizational change with data, then all of us can. Um, but sometimes people hear the word interoperability and say, God, that sounds really technical and boring. Why would we talk about data interoperability? Um, and by the way, none of my customers are asking for this. Nobody, just like Eric Nordstrom said, no customer is talking to him about what channel they're in. None of our customers are talking about interoperability. Um, but here's the thing, while it might look kind of clunky now, this is kind of reminding me of the web in the 90s. Um, it reminds me of the time, for example, building a data-driven website, and I had an executive tell me that I was working on a zero billion dollar industry. <laughs> well, who's laughing now? But, well, anyway. Um, and also remember that when Amazon launched in 1995, there were only 14% of American adults who had access to the internet. And we were all on dial-up, right? So don't denigrate the clunkiness of the tools and don't let our imaginations fail us. Um, and so one way that I wanted to help us sort of think through that was to talk about um, my friend Hugo, Hugo Campos. He is originally from Brazil, and he taught me this wonderful phrase in Portuguese, which I'm not going to try and repeat, because I don't speak Portuguese, but it basically is um, someone who holds the knife and the cheese. And uh, that means the person holds all the cards. They have what they need to create change. Um, and so I decided that I would um, illustrate this. Imagine um, a spectrum where there's a group of people who have full access to data, and people who have very little access to data. And then the other spectrum is people who have great ideas and are ready, willing, and able to build tools using data versus people who don't yet have those skills, don't yet have those ideas. So you might find yourself in the data holders group, um, and let's call that the data pantry. You've got the cheese. <laughs> Another group are the entrepreneurs and innovators who have fantastic ideas, and this might actually include patients and caregivers who have great ideas about how to use health data to better take care of themselves and their families. They're the people who have the knife. What we all want to build toward through partnerships, through hiring, um, through whatever we can do, we want to reach for that group, the data elite. We want to be the people who are holding the knife and the cheese. But you might look at that blank square and say, so who's left? Well, that's actually the biggest group of all, and we love these people. These people are our customers. And just to extend the cheese metaphor, we're going to make sandwiches for them that are so good, they're going to say, where have you been all my life? I am now able to manage my diabetes. I am now able to be a better caregiver because I can get my mom's records all in one place and get a second opinion faster. You anticipated that the school year was coming and you got my kids' vaccination records all together for me. These are the kind of service-oriented things that we can do with interoperable data. And just to stay on Hugo for a second, he actually has um, a condition that requires him to have an ICD. And he noticed that when he um, had his favorite evening drink, which is a scotch whiskey, 
he felt his heart flutter. And so he asked his doctor, can I get access to my ICD data? And the doctor said, no, I'm sorry, it's, it's just for me. So Hugo wrote to Medtronic, the maker of the device, and said, I'd like to get access to my own device data. And they said, no, you can't have it. And so he went on eBay and bought a device that allows him to jailbreak his own ICD. <laughs> and he was able to interpret the data and do an N of 1 trial with a glass of Scotch whiskey. Um, and he did track that he does have AFib. And so sadly, he's had to give up his favorite drink. But the story here is that Medtronic is hoarding the cheese. Medtronic is hoarding the data that makes a difference in Hugo's life. And that hurts not only Hugo, that hurts his family, that hurts his employer, and that hurts his health insurance company, who all want to keep Hugo well. So, while we talk about interoperability of health data, that sounds pretty boring and technical, it's actually very human.